Today I'm greeting you in a different way because I have to acknowledge that there are those who are joining us from cyber this morning. To those who are following us from the internet, greetings, friends. This is the house of the Lord. Enjoy your worship together with us. The ministry that has just begun, if you are not aware, is Revere God Ministries. And we are streaming from the YouTube. Please follow us on, on, on your YouTube channels. Let us take our Bibles quickly and turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Then we we'll read from verses 11 through verse 16. I'm reading from the New International Version. It reads as follows. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief, when the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, verse 13, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Verse 14. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story, and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Join me in the word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, hear your word as we read in the hearing of your people. It sounds a story that is so familiar to each and every one of us, if not most. May these words have a new meaning in our hearts as we listen to them and as we pray this evening. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There were there were dates when I was at Bethel College. There were dates we used to enjoy. And we never, never, ever forgot those dates. The first one I would like to tell you about our dates at Bethel. First one was the first of September, the spring day. On that day, spring day, you would wish to be on any street of Bethel College on spring day. Or if you are on the street, you would pray that you don't meet anyone on the street. Why? Because on that day, you might be greeted with a bucket full of water. It's a spring day. It didn't matter who you are. Once you find you on the street, then I've got a bucket of water. I'm greeting with a bucket full of water. So I didn't enjoy that one very much. But it was a date we marked it better. The second date that we never ever forgot. And if you happen to forget it, you'll be reminded. It was the first of April. All Fool's Day. You see, on that day, one 
had liberty to make a make-believe story and watch his victim fall apart. You think it was fun? So no. That one I also participated in. I remember one such day. I woke up early in the morning and went to the farm manager, Mr. Nachuban. I had my credible lies to tell. Not at his door. Mr. Nachuban, your cattle are all over your, your field. It was your main field at the better. So, I watched him run to the middle of the yard when there were no cattle at the end. Now, I said to you that was my credible main believe story. Let me explain one. You see, at Bethel College at that time, all the students had abandoned manual labor. No student was working except for this one speaking. So the staff trusted me as I was the only one who was still doing manual labor at them. So when I told him that story, he believed me. You can call it fun, but in reality, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. It is deceiving an, an individual or a group of individuals who have said this is a make believe story. So to be deceived is to believe in a lie. You are deceived. All April Fool's Day are good for only that one day, or for that one hour, or for that one minute. And once it gets extended beyond that, there's a problem. It is bad enough when the story has been extended for more than the time it is expected to. But I believe what is more serious about this make believe story is one's trust that gets eroded for eternity. Some deceived individuals often extend this deception for much longer time than it is intended for. Let us look at the first such make believe story in the Bible. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 4. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat of any tree in the garden? Verse 4. You will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman. That was a make believe story. The lie. That was an apple fool's day. If, if you please. I have seen this story being perpetuated even in 2020. 
most of us seated here and listening to this discourse have huge sums of money set aside for the day when they die, not to enjoy when they're still alive. We have got policies for a funeral, for death. I've seen and conducted some funerals and I've seen people speak to a coffin because they still believe in that make-believe story, the lie. A person who's dead is not really dead. That's a make-believe story. That has been extended for much longer time than it was intended for. Another make-believe story is the one that we've just read for our scripture reading this one. In Matthew 28. I would like to call your attention to verse 15 in particular. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. My Bible tells me that some people, let me begin with the Jews, they do not believe that Christ really is uh, rose up from the dead. They don't believe. They believe Christ was an imposter that they got from the priests. Let's go to the Bible once again for proof of that. In chapter 37, verse 62, after 64. The next day, one, the, the one after the preparation day, pardon me, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. 63. Said, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give us the, the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. That's a make believe story. Because Christ's tomb still stands empty up to this very day. It's all for today. What is really difficult, what is really dangerous with this story is that it was told by religious people. Not just religious people but people in charge of a church. The priests, not one priest, the priests and the elders told the story. It's a make-believe story, not true at all. I know you say 
it's bad. But I think what is really bad with this story is that these people who are still holding on to this make believe story are not ready for the Christ who is coming back. You see, they have extended this awful day for much longer than it was intended for. I like the story as Ellen White puts it. In the, in the book, The Dissolved Ages, page 781, first and second paragraph, Ellen White puts the story this way, and I quote her. At the sight of the angels and the glorified Savior, the Roman gods had fainted and become as dead men. When the heavenly train was hidden from their view, they rose up to their feet and as quickly as their trembling limbs could carry them, they made their way to the gate of the garden. Staggering like drunken men, they hurried on into the city telling those whom they met on the road the wonderful news. They were making their way to Pilate, but their report had been carried to the Jewish authorities, and the chief priests and the rulers sent for them to be brought first into their presence. Then Ellen White says, Mark these words. A strange appearance those soldiers presented. A strange appearance. Trembling with fear, their faces colorless or pale, they bore the testimony to them. A resurrection of Christ. The soldiers told all just as they had seen it. They had not had time to think or speak anything but the truth. Then she continues to say, With painful utterance, they said, it was the Son of God who was crucified. We have heard an angel proclaim him as the majesty of heaven, the King of God. Remember, there was a high priest who tore up his garments instead of tearing up his cloth in his heart. He was present. His name was Caiaphas. Listen to the story of Caiaphas as been told by Ellen White. The faces of the priests were as those of the dead. Caiaphas tried to speak. His lips moved, but they uttered no sound. The soldiers were about to leave the council room when a voice stayed them. Caiaphas had at last found his speech. At last, make out have said, at long last, he found his speech. Wait, wait, he said, tell no the things you have seen. Tell 
No one who thinks you have seen. What things have the soldiers seen? We have resurrected sin here. The soldiers have heard from the angels that this was the majesty of heaven. The king of glory, the priest, ordered the soldiers not to tell anyone this good news. Then in paragraph 2 of that same book, Alan White says, A line report was then given to the soldiers, saying, said the priest, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. That, my friend, is a main believing story. It wasn't true. Now, this is a strange conversation. How so strange is that soldiers, Roman soldiers, these were not Jewish soldiers. These were Roman soldiers were telling the truth. And the priests and the elders of the church who know about God's law that you shall not tell a lie are telling a main believing story. That's a strange conversation. The question I want to pose onto you this morning is who were they trying to fool? This place, who were they trying to fool? You see, a plan, a plan is designed to pull some wool in front of someone's eyes. That's the plan. That's a make believe story. Whenever you do a plan on someone, you have a target. So on this plan, on this awful day, on this lie, who was the target? Number one, the soldiers. Number two, the believers. Number three, the non-believers as well. I'm sure you're listening to this sermon today do belong to at least one of these groups. That means you also are intact. Now, let us quickly analyze this story, this plan, this made the new story. The priest did not want to believe that Jesus was the son of the living God in human flesh. The priest did not, oh, the priest and the elders did not want people to believe that Jesus was the son of God in human flesh. Hence, they told people that he was an imposter. He was a deceiver. He was a liar. When they were lying, the priests and the elders, the church officials at that time, had plotted 
had tried several times before to kill this Jesus so as to silence him. They failed. Now that they had succeeded finally by falling into the same plane of salvation. You see, these were sinners who were not admitting that they were sinners. They were sinners. What do you call a liar? Someone who lies is a sinner. Alright? If lying is a sin, uh, any person telling lies is a sin. Now that the sinners had killed the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the, of the world, First John, John 1 verse 29. Now, this priest, they didn't want any other people to benefit from the blood of the blood. Tell the people, they said, his disciples stole him one his I will not get in there. They did not want to believe that he was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, yet they killed the Lamb of God. They did not want anyone to believe in Jesus, so they had to paint and frame him an imposter. Now that they had heard from the souls that he was indeed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the King of Glory, they still did not want anyone to get him. One other thing we learn from this story is that they bribed the souls. I will not get today onto a reason why they, they, they bribed. But they bribed the souls. You see, lives are not free. The only free thing you can get today, even now, is salvation. It is free of charge. But lives are never free. We are told that they went to Pilate to say, give us security for the tomb to make sure that his body does not get disappeared without place. All right, they got, the Bible says, the army. The Roman army, according to my small research I've done, was divided into sections. One, there was a legend, legend, that was a group of about 5,000 men, souls. But let us start it from the least to the bottom, to, to the highest. There was a, a contubernum, contubernum, that was soldiers of about eight men. Contubernum. And then after the contubernum, there was a centurion. A centurion. That was made up of ten of these contubernums. Remember there were eight contubernum? So centurion, that was a group of eighteen soldiers. A centurion was led by a centurion in charge. And then above the centurion was a cohort. A cohort was made up of six centurion 
So 6 times 80, that will give you 9. And then 10 of the cohorts would give you a legend. You say that is 4,800. Yes. But this one had even administrators and other people, so that made the number 5,000. So I do not believe that Pilot gave them a legend 5,000, because had he done so, I believe. It, they would have too much power to come and even challenge the Roman so, uh, the king. So, so to the uh, a legend is out. A cohort that is 408 men, considering the space of time they had to go and guard the tomb, remember it's the Sabbath now. Church officials are not at church. On the Sabbath, they are talking the story of guarding the, the tomb. They don't call that breaking the Sabbath. And if it is not breaking the Sabbath, I don't know what it is. But considering the time, I still believe they did not get 480 men to organize in a short space of time. So, in my analysis, the cohort is also out. The credible, the credible would be a centurion, because the countervenant would be too few for them. Remember, Jesus had 12 disciples and minus one, that is he had 11 disciples. Who could easily be overpowered? I mean, who, who could easily overpower eight men to the level? So, I'm sticking with a centurion. Considering the amount that was paid to Judas, Sky, 30 pieces of silver, which was a slave money. These were not slaves, these were soldiers. And these soldiers could tell the story that the priests do, do not want it to be told. So they couldn't be given a slave money. They could be given real money. So I'll suggest for our sake, let's say two times the 30 pieces, 60 pieces of silver given to each of the soldiers, 80 of them, huge sums of money, just to keep quiet, said I. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is not about money paid on the guards, lest you, you think I'm um, trying to invite the commission of just just not and I'm not there. So it's not about how much money was paid. It's about the bribes. It's about the impulsion, the lies that we are told. The truth of the matter is this one. This was lies told by the church officials. That's the truth of the story. Now, let's look at it this way. This is all for day. He said, Frank intended to keep the truth away from you. The sad story is that Christians today still believe the 
this effect. I saw on the television news the other day, or was it? It was a WhatsApp. A man walking nude on the street with his either wife or girlfriend, also on their birthday suits, he called himself Jesus. I said, oh, that's a make believe story. It was, I know why Jesus didn't walk around the streets on his birthday suit. And people are falling for that. If he is a Jesus, when did he come it, I did not see him. The Bible still says, all eyes will see. You didn't see that story. That means that's a made-believe story. As you walk around the street, you see on the bumper stickers of the cars, people calling themselves way as well. How many ways are there? That's a made believe story. That means all of these people I'm counting are not ready for the Christ to come back the second time. And if they are not ready, despite the coronavirus as a sign that Christ is coming back, besides the locusts up in Kenya, besides the marine animals having died in numbers mysteriously as a sign, still people don't believe he is coming back again. Because of the made believe story and all false faith that was meant to pull wool on someone's eyes. Friends, the real danger is you take what the church leaders say as truth. That's the day. People will tell you this is what my church believes. Even if you say no, read the scripture, it isn't saying so. You say, this is what my priest said. This is what my pastor said. This is what my elder said. Never, this is what my Bible says. This is what my God says. They take the made believe story as the gospel truth when it is not the gospel truth. The danger, friends, with a religious friend is it is designed to deceive you. It is designed to make you believe that the people we are hearing it from are going to heaven with you, when in actual fact they aren't going to know heaven. <coughs> I have told you straight, I did pull war on Elder Nutrana's eyes. Told a friend, told now. Why am I telling you that? I'm saying to you, don't believe me. If I've told a lie before, how can you believe me now that I'm telling you the truth? I will stay with you. 
I'm saying the only person you can blame is Jesus. Because in his mouth there has never come a lie. That is a person I'm inviting you to follow today. I'm saying to you, these days, I'm singing a song. We call it a chorus, but it's a hymn. In our new Seventh day Adventist hymn. It says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, not telling them, not telling them. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Not any better, not any better. If you sing this song with me, many you will be singing. You will not take any person's words thought of the words of Christ because men only are true and true. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, in these days it is so easy for us to fall and pray on the people we think are sent by you are from you to show us the way to you. We have seen and witnessed in many places people purporting to be filled with your spirit when it is the other spirit. No wonder, dear Lord, you said we must test the spirits. We have made a commission, a commitment this morning. In the words that of a hymn, we have decided to follow. Keep us truthful to this commitment. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.